situation in which he had to fulfill. Um, I don't think God's this hard on his normal people. I don't think he wants to be this hard on his normal Christian people. But nevertheless, the Lord Jesus Christ, getting back to the focus, so we've shifted from John now, temporarily, and we find that the Lord Jesus Christ was driven into the wilderness. And that was for 40 days. Now, 40 is a number that's not unpopular in the Bible used in many different ways. There's the sun again looking back across the oval with the smoke giving it this brilliant apostolic as it were cover colour. Incredible scenes this morning. Not unlike other mornings this time while the bushfires have been going on. So 40 is not an uncommon number in the Bible and good morning and this is the time period in which Jesus was to be tempted in the wilderness now it's a very short record in Mark of the wilderness experience because since he was tempted by Satan and was with the wild beasts and angels ministered to him then it shifts, then the narrative shifts back to John in verse 14. It says, after John was put in prison. Now there's a complex story behind John being put in prison, but we'll go with the narrative of the gospel. We won't, for those of you, many of you will know the narrative. You can look it up in another gospel. But Jesus came to Galilee preaching, and this is what he preached. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Now what was the gospel of the kingdom? Well, the kingdom of God. And this is what he said. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. It was coming. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now this has been a very, very <laughs> um, misdiagnosed passage of scripture. Again, um, if you've been following me, this is a transitional, a religious, cultural, transitional statement for mine, from what I believe. Look at this beautiful wild duck. Just crossing the road there, viewers. Beautiful bird. Might be a little bit dark for you. Complementing and going on, moving forward from John's original, um, well, John's message. The Lord says, the kingdom of God is at hand. The mightier one than what John was, the Messiah. Repent and believe in the gospel. We want you to shift from the Mosaic law, leave that behind and put your faith now in the good news of the gospel, the message of the Messiah. The Messiah has come. Can you see this? Now, <clears throat> the way the Westerners try and apply this to themselves is um, you need to repent of your sins and come to Christ and receive the Holy Spirit and blah, 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 blah. But the actual context to me, and I stand to be debated, it's debatable, is the fact that again, along with John and moving forward for, from John, the Messiah had to help the people's minds understand that God's plan was moving away from and abolishing the Mosaic law 
and was now shifting to salvation through the gospel of the Messiah. The fact that the Messiah was coming and that he was ready to make his way to the crescendo on the one hand of the introduction and beginning of the New Testament and the closure of the Old Testament. That's what this was about. Where Christ said, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, that was his way of saying the Old Testament is fulfilled and it was to be fulfilled in him the kingdom of God is at hand the New Testament repent let the Old Testament close and believe in the gospel and receive the finished work of the Messiah when it was to be consummated <coughs> <clears throat> Morning. It's that simple. It's not a complex statement relative to the Westerners. It was specific to the Israelis who had suffered so long and so diabolically under the Mosaic law. Repent. Let the Old Testament close and be finished with and fulfilled. And let your mind be able to see that God's plan now is via the New Testament. The, what will be the finished work of the Messiah. Now they had a lot of work to do. It wasn't going to be that quite that simple. And there's a gentleman paddling out there on his ski. Very brave. And so we move on in the Gospel of John. The four fishermen called as his disciples. So as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, and I believe that would be beautiful, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. <coughs> then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now that was a big claim because what he is saying is, abandon the Old Testament way of doing things you into the kingdom of God and this would have been a hard pill to swallow because these people were a lot look we wonder why he chose fishermen and and these types the reason for that was their mind wasn't intrinsically fixed as it were specifically and totally on the Mosaic Law. There was room for him to work with the introduction of the New Testament that would come through his death, burial and resurrection. That's why he chose these fishermen and things. <coughs> because his battle against the Old Testament in their minds, the Mosaic Law, wasn't going to be as complex. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. So again, we see that it wasn't a, a difficult decision for these people. Um, it's very similar to John's ministry because there was momentum building now and things had shifted to the focus of the Lord Jesus Christ given 
the events that took place at his baptism and the voice of God and the Holy Spirit descending and all that stuff and now he has people following him then he saw um, when he had gone a little farther from there he saw James the son of Zebedee that's the pool in there and John the brother his brother so we have some brothers mixed into the with the disciples here in the group who were also in the boat mending their nets and immediately he called them and they left his fa their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him so they, they essentially they ab abandoned their inheritance because the fathers would pass the businesses on to their sons so essentially they're seen beyond the surface um, of the person and into the deeper purpose and plan of what he was there for which was to fulfill the introduction well the closure of the Old Testament and the introduction of the new there's the sailing club now I'm going to yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watch it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.